and welcome to the Victorious Souls podcast with me, your host, Danielle Burnock from DanielleBurnock.com, that lady on the internet who loves you, connecting you to the love that heals so you can love yourself from survive to thrive. Mm -hmm. Today, my guest is Cindy Cox. She is mm -hmm. a woman who has experienced cancer two times, been healed of it two times, but it's two different kinds of cancer, but she was healed all because of the love yeah. and the power of Jesus. And so she's here to share her story with you today. And I can't wait to hear the whole story because I've only heard bits and pieces. Welcome to my show today, Cindy. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview today. You are very welcome. I'm glad to be here. Well, like I said to them, you were diagnosed with cancer two times. What was life like before mm -hmm. your first diagnosis? And how old were you? And what was going yeah. on in life? And tell us about yourself before yes. <laughs> this okay. big adventure. That's a that's a that's an important question. So I was living a, a life packed full of life. We had three children in the high school kind of age range. And, you know, busy with work. I was a learning consultant um, in Rochester Public Schools. Um, just work was my God. Mm -hmm. um, I loved what I did. I worked so hard. Family was, you know, everything. I was a very religious woman, um, but I didn't have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. The strange thing is I thought I did, but I didn't know what I didn't know. Mm. Um, I was brought up in, Catholic, in with Catholicism, and I had a very beautiful, strong, faith-filled family, and that was my way of life, and I didn't know anything else. Mm -hmm. I was 43 when I was diagnosed, and um, yeah, all of a sudden, I went from being a woman who was a type A personality, working hard to you know achieve goals, work hard, all that, and all of a sudden, when that first cancer diagnosis came, I couldn't do it. I couldn't fix it. I couldn't mm -hmm. set a goal and, and take care of it. Yeah. And it was taken, you know, my life was put in a different position. And that was when I finally realized that I needed God. It, he wasn't just somebody to go worship on a Sunday. I needed him mm -hmm. desperately. So everything changed. Wow. How did you find out that, that you had cancer and what kind of cancer did you have? Yes. Well, the first cancer that I was diagnosed with, it really had no symptoms whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, I was, Kent and I loved to go on warm weather vacations. So we would go to Jamaica every year, leave kids with grandma for a week. And, and so I got a lot of sun. And I remember thinking, I probably should go get a skin check, you know, just preventative. So I made an appointment with a dermatologist, went and got a skin check. And I had, she found a mole, a melanoma mole, yeah. and she immediately took it off. I mean, usually I've gone to the, mel, uh, to the dermatologist now for 20 years, every six months, if not more often, and they have never taken a mole off right then and there. Wow. So it must, I, don't, I never even saw it to tell you the truth. Mm. It was on my butt <laughs> of all places, someplace that never saw the sun. Yeah, that's crazy. I never had, I know. And I, and I, I'm sure God was probably leading me to make that appointment to begin with. Oh, sir, sure. sounds like there was no reason. Gone all of a sudden, well, I think I right. ought to do this. I think I should do this. It's something I should probably do. And she immediately took the mole off, sent it to the pathologist, and it came back a melanoma mole. Mm -hmm. That was considered stage yeah. one um, because you know it was just the excision of the mole, the, the the little excision of the mole. They sent me to U of M, and um, just to have a consultation and. When I was at U of M, they did uh, just another exam and felt my lymph nodes in the area. And there was a swollen lymph node mm -hmm. in my groin. And they did a biopsy that very day and it came back positive for mm -hmm. melanoma. So that moved me from stage one to stage three. And then the, the next uh, protocol, and I, again, I was just doing what the doctor said. I was just, you know, following their protocol. And the next step was to have a bunch more tests. And when they did more scans and more tests, what they found was that the cancer had spread through my whole lymphatic system. Wow. It was stage four. It was in my neck. It was in my uh, diaphragm area, my abdomen. It was in my groin. It was through my whole lymph node system. Wow. And it was considered stage four. 
And that's when they told me that it was incurable. This is 20 years ago. They've come a long way with melanoma since then. But at that point, it was considered incurable. They did recommend an aggressive treatment to um, sustain my life for a while, but it was considered incurable. Wow. That's when everything changed. Wow. Did that terrify yeah. you initially? I had so much fear. There aren't words to describe it. Wow. My best description of the fear that I experienced was the lead blanket that they put on you when you go to the dentist to give you x-rays. That heavy weight, but it never left. That fear just came and just, it just covered me. And I felt literally like I couldn't breathe, like I couldn't eat, like I couldn't sleep. And I didn't know how, how not to have fear. I mean, I was just all consuming. Immediately after I got the diagnosis, I started having symptoms in my body immediately. Wow. Like that's, within the next day. That's so strange. Yeah. I believe it was a demonic thing. I believe it was probably counterfeit symptoms because there was no reason to have no symptoms one day and then to have all kinds of symptoms the next day. Yeah. I had, I could feel masses in my abdomen. I had pain. I, I mean, I could just, I just, and because I didn't know any better, I was focusing on those symptoms. I was looking at them. I was feeling them and, and that fed the fear. Yeah. Cause that's what humans do. That that's a very right. human response, very natural. Right. Response. Right. So, well, so that's what, what did I did. You do? What did you do after that? Well, it, it, the, the story's kind of long and um, um, a lot of facets to it. But um, I had a friend at my school, a young teacher. Um, I'm going to say her name because she is somebody that I'd want to give all the, the credit to speaking up. Her name is Jennifer Hood. Um, she went to Life Christian with us back when we were at Life Christian. But beautiful woman, um, young teacher. I, we, I was uh, uh, her mentor. I was her boss, basically. Mm -hmm. I had helped hire her and uh, she came to me and she invited me to a healing meeting. And um, I, had, I had initially said no, because after I was uh, between stage three and stage four, they had, the plan was to do uh, surgery mm -hmm. and to take out the, the whole section of lymph nodes in my groin. Mm -hmm. But then when they found it through my whole lymphatic system, they canceled the surgery. They said the surgery won't do any good. So between those two, Jenny had asked me to a, a healing um, meeting. And I had said, I can't go because I'm scheduled for surgery. Mm -hmm. After that stage four diagnosis came, I called Jen and it was a long weekend. We had a February long winter break and I called her from break and I told her what had happened. I said, Jenny, I do want to go to that healing meeting. And can you please send me some scriptures? Cause I'm really, really having a hard time with this. So, so she sent me some healing scriptures. I remember the morning that I read them. It was February the 19th. I was diagnosed on February the 13th. So this was just a few days later, February the 19th. I got up early in the morning for the first time in my life to read the Bible. It was the day we were going to be um, going back to school for the, you know, after the break. And I um, opened my Bible and I read those scriptures and they were overwhelming to me. I had no idea that there were scriptures in the Bible about healing. Mm. Again, I was Catholic and there is a cycle of readings that are read. It's, you know, and you only read what's for that Sunday or for that day of the, the year. And I had, I had no idea these scriptures were in the Bible. I was overwhelmed. It was good. It was good, overwhelming. I remember that morning, it was um, probably 530 in the morning. I got up after I read them and I typed them because I wanted to be able to access these scriptures. I typed them on my computer and I clicked save, I clicked save. And then God did something very supernatural. Um, in the microwave, in the microwave, in the Microsoft Word document, when you click save, there's a little box that comes up and it puts the first line of text in the name. And then you can change it if you want to. Right. But that's not what happened. Oh. In that little box, it said God's message to you. Wow. That's not what I had. I had just scriptures on the page. And it said, God's message to you. And I was looking at my computer screen, just completely overwhelmed. Wow. And then the electricity went off in my house. 
<laughs> and it went completely black. It was like 5.30 in the morning. I'm sitting at, at my desk in the absolute black. And I knew that I knew that I knew that it was supernatural. In the neighborhood that we lived in, the electricity never went off. Mm. There was no storm. There was no wind. There was no rain. There was no reason for the electricity to, off, to go off, but it did. And my room was completely black. Within a couple of minutes, I just sat there in holy awe, holy fear. And within a couple of minutes, it came back on. My computer came back on and that document was still there. I had never, I still hadn't saved it, but it was still there. So I click save, still on this computer that I'm talking at right now, it's there. And then I um, closed everything down and went to school. I saved the file, of course, went to school. And I immediately went to find Jenny. And I told her what had happened. And she stopped. She never even really talked about the magnitude of that God incident. Mm -hmm. She just stopped and she looked at me and she said, Cindy, it's not God's will for you to be sick. He didn't give you cancer. Amen. And then she told me, she said, she gave me a truth that I'd never heard. She said, Cindy, Jesus paid the price for your healing at the same time that he paid the price for your forgiveness of sins and your eternal life. Amen. I'd never heard that. And then she said, are you saved? And I immediately started to answer the way I always answer when people ask me if I was saved. I said, well, I think so. I'm a good person. I go to church every Sunday. Um, I, you know, I take my kids to church. They've made all their sacraments. I even taught in a Catholic school. I don't have any major sin on my soul. Yes, I think I'm saved. And she didn't argue. She didn't debate. She just said, do you want to be sure? And I said, good yes. Answer, Jenny. Good I answer, Jenny. Think, yes. I think what God had done through that whole thing in the early morning was he had just done something to my hard heart. You know, my heart that was religious, my heart that had God in a little box. And, and it prepared me for that moment when Jenny said, do you want to be saved? And so I said, yes, yes. I said, I, the, right now, at that point, I literally believed the doctor's report that I was going to die. They had given me six to nine months to live. Yeah. And I thought I was going to die. So I said, yeah, I want to be sure. Yeah. So she went to her public school desk and she brought out a Bible and she opened it to Romans chapter 10. And she had me read out loud the scripture in, in verse nine and 10 that says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that he's been resurrected from the dead, that you'll be saved. And then she led me in a prayer of salvation. I remember it was so interesting because um, she was a first grade teacher and we had been in her there. They got these little work rooms, little closet kind of things. And that's where we were standing when we were talking, the kids, the bell rang and the kids were coming into the classroom, little bunches of them. And she just held up her hand. She's just a minute. And as those kids are just coming in, she's praying with me a prayer that changed my eternity. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I think that was February the 19th you right where you were because he he took yeah. you to the dermatologist I I believe I believe you know in praying and giving our whole mm -hmm. life to God and being born again and all that I I think that his grace is so huge that he, he's yeah he knows when we when we've given him this much yes <laughs> we give him just this little hair yeah. of a spot He'll take yes. whatever we give him and then he'll yeah. coax us into more and coax yes. us into more because he and wants, woo and he woo wants us, us to yes. fully experience him because he loves us so much. Yes, I agree. So I loved her answer. Do you want to yes. be sure? I love Yes. That. Yes. I love that. So then what happened after that? Because then. Yes. So I went to that healing meeting. How did that take place? What happened after that? Well, I went to that healing meeting and um, I remember by then, the, this was only one week later less than one week. By then the symptoms were so big and the pain was intense. The symptoms were magnified. And I remember going to that meeting and Jenny had given me a couple words of advice. She said, Cindy, she gave me three or four healing accounts in the Bible. One of them was the woman with the issue of blood. I remember that one specifically. And then she gave me a couple other healing accounts. And she said, read these every day this week. And then when you come to the healing meeting, come expecting. So I just did that. I read the scriptures every day and I, and I just fed my heart with 
you know, those few little scriptures. And then I just said out loud what she told me. I said, okay, God, I'm expecting, I'm expecting, I'm expecting. I didn't know what I was expecting because I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> but I went to this healing meeting and I remember standing for praise and worship. And it was the first experience I'd ever had with a true praise and worship time. Wow. You know, I'd done hymns, mm -hmm. you know, beginning, middle, end of the service, but I never had praise and worship and it lasted so long. <laughs> and I remember standing up and holding on to the seats in front of me because I could, I was in so much pain and just saying, when is this going to end? I mean, I wasn't entering into worship. I was just in pain. And then the meeting was very, very long. It started at seven and, went, and ended at about 10. And then at the end, there was, it was um, uh, a long message, long sermon. And then at the end, the healing minister, the healing evangelist called people up for prayer. So I went up for prayer. Kent went with me and I had a brother and a sister-in-law who went with us as well. And I went up for prayer and, and he prayed for me. And I left that meeting with just as much pain as I'd walked in with that, to that meeting. But the next day was a Saturday and the pain was less. Mm -hmm. And on Sunday, the pain was gone. I still had symptoms. I still had cancer. I had more tests, lots more tests, still had cancer, but I didn't have pain. Wow. And again, it was just a, the grace of God. And he was immediately showing me that this was all real, that prayer was powerful and that, and that, you know, there was something to this whole God heals thing that I'd never even known about. Yeah. The other thing that Jenny did um, right away was she gave me a book of healing scriptures and she said, Cindy, this is your medicine. I know this is uh, as a healing teacher, I don't want, I, I, I'm cautious of doing what she did. Mm -hmm. Because it you it can become legalistic, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you have to pray these prayers three times a day or whatever. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't know any different. Mm -hmm. And Jenny said, "This is your medicine. Read these out loud." And that's what I did. So I remember reading those healing scriptures out loud, and I remember, I remember something happening in my heart. I remember at the beginning when I was reading those promises, they were good, they were really good, but I felt like they were fairy tale. I felt like they were too good to be true. They were amazing, but it was like a fairy tale. Yeah. But then the more I fed my heart with the promises of healing from the word of God, the more my heart started to open and breathe them in and take them in. And little by little, by little, by little, those promises became alive in my heart. Wow. And I know that faith was growing little by little. So how long did you, then what happened? You, when did you go to the doctor? When did you find yeah. out it was gone? So I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward this part because this go, the, I, you know, I could go into great detail, but um, I want to share my other testimony too. So what happened was things started to change in the medical, in the medical aspect mm. about one month after um, I came to know Jesus I went for a, another set of biopsies because remember I had um, cancer showing up in all sorts of areas of my body. Yeah. I had the one in my groin that was absolutely positive, but they wanted to check and they wanted to get more biopsies of these other areas. So when I went in for those fine needle biopsies, the result was inconclusive. Ooh. They couldn't get any cells. They were there. They saw them on the ultrasound, you know, when they were going in there with a the needle, but they couldn't get any cells. So I came out of there with what I felt was a good report because mm. it was inconclusive. Then the doctors were a little bit, my, my new um, oncologist was a little bit thrown. It didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So then he gave me three options at that point. He said, option number one, we do nothing. But if we do nothing, you have six to nine months to live. That was his, that was his statement. I said, I don't like that option. <laughs> the second <laughs> The second option that. Was, yeah, <laughs> was to treat it as if it were stage three, where the cancer was just in my groin. And in that case, um, uh, and start with radical treatment, radical aggressive treatment. But he said, if it is indeed in all of these other lymph nodes, the way it appears on the PET scan, then it won't do any good. 
And he, the third option was to do an exploratory surgery and to take those lymph nodes out to do a pathology report and to get a, an absolute um, diagnosis of, uh, you know, in all of those lymph nodes before they started treatment. And I went back to Jenny and I said, okay, Jen, at this point, it had been a couple of months since my um, initial diagnosis. And I said, I was growing in my faith. I was standing in a, a whole new place with God. I was developing a relationship with him that I'd never had. And I said, Jen, I want it, I want God to know my heart. I believe, I mean, I, I've got a relationship I've never had. I, I'm in just in awe of his love for me. I want him to know that I, I trust him and I believe. So, but, but what do I do? I've got these three options. What do I do? And she gave me some really, really good wisdom that I have passed on so many times since then to other people. She said, Cindy, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you choose option one or two or three. God will meet you right where you're at. He'll be with you no matter what you choose. And then she said, she gave me some more wisdom. She said, go home and spend some time in prayer. And I am baptized in the spirit. She said, pray in the spirit. And she said, seek peace yeah. and then follow peace. So that's what I did. I went home that weekend and I prayed and asked God. I would set one of those options at a time before God. I'd say, God, should I just, you know, do nothing and trust that you're healing me supernaturally? And I would pray, 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 pray. I didn't have peace with that. And then I, I put the next option. Should I... Um, go uh, and treat this as if it's stage three and start with the, the aggressive treatment. I had peace with that either. And so when I prayed about the uh, exploratory surgery, that's where I had the peace. Mm -hmm. The same weekend, this is how cool God is. The same weekend, Charles Caps was coming to Life Christian Church. <sighs> the same weekend that I was having that weekend of prayer and making that decision. And we went, he, he, he taught Sunday morning, he taught Sunday evening. And when we were driving home that evening, Kent and I both had the same revelation, the same truth that had been deposited in our hearts. And the truth was that I had been believing a future tense healing. I had been saying, I know God that you will heal me or that you are healing me. But after that weekend, with Charles Capps teaching, I realized that the work was already done, that I had already been healed, that healing was past tense, mm. that Jesus had already purchased my healing, that by his stripes, I was healed. Yes. Not by his stripes, I was going to be healed sometime. The truth was that by his stripes, I was healed. And then I changed my words. I changed my speaking just in a very small way, but it was, it was, I think an integral part of a switch in my faith. So um, we scheduled the surgery, another God incident. I call it a divine delay. I, that was in April that I had that weekend to make that decision. And so I made the decision for the exploratory surgery and it wasn't scheduled until the end of June. Wow. That doesn't happen with stage four cancer. <laughs> You're usually in surgery the next day or the next week, mm. not two months later. Yeah. But I was thrilled at that point. It was like, God, thank you. You're giving me time. I need time to feed my heart. I need time to come to know you more. And so I just dove in and I just poured out my heart and my time and my, my, um, you know, relationship grew, 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 grew. And the surgery was in the middle of the end of June. And when I went in for that surgery, there was no cancer. Every area, even the groin, wow. even the one that was positive, they removed all the suspect, suspected lymph nodes. They sent them to pathology. There was not one cell of cancer in my body. Wow. Never had any treatment. Wow. Well, you did have treatment. You took, you took the word. My God. <laughs> I like how yeah. she called it that. Bad I, treatment. I, you know, it's true. If you take it like medicine and how you said you hesitate to or you're cautious in having people speak the scriptures. But if you communicate it in the way that you call it medicine, yeah, then you take it like medicine, then yes. the mentality is wrapped around it differently, yes. which is yes. so important. And when I share my second story, you'll hear that 
in a completely new integral way in my life. So I'll share that when I'm, when you're ready for me to share my second story. Wow. So then after that, you, mm -hmm. you started teaching and mm -hmm. you wrote a book and yes, yes, with all yes. Of this, you yes. entered into a so whole within, new part yes. of your life. Yes. My life changed radically. My whole perspective changed in my career, in my family, in my marriage, everything, because God became first. Um, if, if there was one area I would, if I could in, look inward at me before cancer and me after cancer, it would be that I was filled with idolatry and I didn't know it. Mm. I didn't serve, you know, other gods like Muhammad or Buddha, but my God was my work mm. and I had idolatry in my life and my priorities were very out of balance. Mm. But after I had cancer, everything shifted. God became number one mm. over everything. I started to give him lordship over my work, over my marriage, over my family, over my children, over my parenting, over every aspect of my life. Everything shifted. We were in this amazing church that taught truth. And um, so we made a, a, we made a decision. It was a hard decision to leave my lifelong, you know, religion of Catholicism and start attending uh, non-denominational spirit led spirit filled church, which was a very big personal decision to make. Yeah. And then we started um, at the life Bible Institute, which was an, a very um, rich two year Bible school, Bible college. And after we finished that two year study, um, our pastor asked us to start a small group. I remember the last, um, one of the last projects we did during Life Bible Institute was to put together some sort of a ministry. It was like a business plan. It was a project. Mm -hmm. And the one that Jenny and Kent and I did together was a healing ministry or a healing Bible study. Mm -hmm. Well, so we put the whole plan together. And then after we graduated, the pastor asked us to implement it. Awesome. And that's what we did. So that's where our healing ministry started started with maybe two or three people coming to our little healing Bible study. And it has just continued to grow and to um, spread and for God to um, expand our territory since then. Amen. And you wrote a book in there too, right? Which I did. Yes. So this book is called A Blessed Journey Through Terminal Cancer and Into Divine Healing. And I wrote this, it was published in 2006. So um, I was healed in 2002. So it was a few years after that. And that's the same time we started our ministry. Mm -hmm. This is a testimonial and a teaching book. Mm -hmm. So it's got three parts. The first part of the book is my testimony and, it, and how I was saved and baptized with the spirit and came to know Jesus. It's not so much about the cancer. It's <laughs> more about Jesus, yeah. but in the midst of it all. And then part two of the book, this is so cool. After I was healed, the first three people that I told, the first, not, I'm, let me rewind. The first three people that came to me with their own very serious cancer issues, the first three that came to me, I shared my story with them and all three of them were healed too. Wow. One was brain cancer, terminal brain cancer. One was sarcoma. Wow. What's and one that? was, sarcoma is a fatty tissue um, uh, cancer. Hmm. I think it's also in the blood, but you get these like fatty tissue things that are, that are cancerous and they're, it's a very, very serious degree of cancer. And the third one was, um, le leukemia and all three of those people were healed. I told them my story and they were healed wow. and I gave them a little bit of, of, you know, um, truth, but I didn't know much truth. <laughs> so I just gave them a little bit, kind of like Jenny had given me at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And they were all healed. And I saw the impact of the testimony. Yeah. So I, that's why I wrote my testimony a book. And then I put three testimonies in the middle um, of, of the book, powerful testimonies. And then the third part is teaching. And again, it was, it's, it's pretty simple, pretty basic, because that's where I was in my journey. 
So that's my first book. And it was published. That's wonderful. About simple the is yeah. good. People need simple. They need it yes. boiled down to, to simple. There's so much complexity out there yeah. and ginormous words. Like I didn't know what yeah. sarcoma was. It's like yes. there's all these things and we get lost in that. Yeah. So the simpler it can be, the yes. better. And Jenny was yes. blessing you by doing that. So. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So thank you for writing that book. And then in 2020, when the world was going through the pandemic, <laughs> I mean, did you even notice oh, the yeah. pandemic because cancer oh, came goodness. around again? Yeah, it did. That was a crazy year. Um, it was more than the pandemic. Um, don't ask me why. I know it was God. I know it was Holy Spirit because it doesn't make sense. We decided that same year in the middle of the pandemic that we were ready to downsize. We were ready to, um, you know, sell our home, downsize, build a, a new retirement home and get out of the suburbs and get into a more rural area and all that. We decided in the middle of all that. And it had to be God because we didn't know what was going to happen with the economy. We didn't know what was happening when the housing market opened back up because everything was closed when we made the decision. But I felt a go ahead. You know, I took it before God and I really felt peace and I felt a go ahead. And so did Kent. So we went ahead and started the whole process. Well, when the housing market opened back up, we sold our house really quickly because remember what happened. It, the, the housing market went crazy. And um, so we packed up the house. The, our new house wasn't even close to being ready. We closed on and we moved out on September the 10th. On that September the 10th, we had everything packed up. We had moving trucks. We were putting everything in storage because our house wasn't ready. And we were going to move in with Kent's mother. I'm 63 years old, moving in with my mother-in-law. It's not exactly what you want to do at this stage of your life, right? Right. Well, I had backed back up. I had been having paid in my body for about a year. And it was started out pretty minor. It was felt like back backache, back pain. Um, sciatica. I didn't know because I'd never had sciatica, but I thought it felt like sciatica. Um, I, it, it wasn't, you know, it, I could live with it, which is a mistake. You should never say I can live with it, but that's kind of what I did. And um, society and kind of get... conditions us that way, especially yep. in America, you know, suck it yes. up and get over it. Probably yeah. the, God doesn't the want us to live with Childhood anything. time that you grew up in also right. of, you know, suck it up, get over it. You know, don't yeah. be, and all be that. strong. You know, it's not a big deal. So anyway, um, it was uh, probably almost a year. And I, I finally called a doctor and thought, I got to go get this check. But it took me three or four months to get in because of the pandemic. When I finally got in, um, it was like the day before Labor Day weekend. Um, I told her what was going on. She sent me that day for an x-ray. She called me the same day. And mm -hmm. she said, you need a CT scan today. And I said, well, I'm on my way up north to the lake house. And she says, well, you need to cancel everything and go get that CT scan. Well, I said, no, I've lived with, I've had this all this time. It can wait another weekend. I'm going to go up to the cottage. So, but I did go to get the CT scan following Tuesday, called me on Tuesday. And she said, I want you to have a full body MRI, brain, um, cervical, thoracic, lumbar. Wow. So I went and had the MRI and then she called me that day and said, I want you to, you and your husband to come in to get the results of the test. Well, uh, yeah, when you it's get a call like that, well. it's not a good news. So I made the appointment and the appointment was on September the 10th, the same day that we were moving out of our house and moving in with my mother-in-law. Wow. So in the middle of moving day, um, Ken and I went out onto the deck. We had no furniture in the house. We went out on the deck. We sat down. I remember praying a very specific prayer. And I, I, I wanna share this because I think it's an important way to go to hear any report from a doctor. And what I do and what I, rec what I teach others to do is most of us, when we have a big problem and we pray about the problem, that problem can almost become an idol that problem can almost become bigger to you than the bigness of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew that, and I was aware of that. So when Ken and I went to pray, our prayer was that God and his amazing greatness and his truth 
would go between us and that doctor's report. It didn't matter what the doctor's report said. We had God's report. We had the amazing bigness of our God, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, the God who loves. And, and I literally envisioned my amazing, loving God between me and the doctor. So Kent and I, and then God and his report, and then the doctor. So we prayed that before we went, then we went to the doctor, went in, and we got the report that it appeared to be cancer. She immediately called it lymphoma, which is exactly what it was. Um, but she didn't know that because she didn't have a pathology report, but that's what it appeared to be. So um, she, I think, was expecting us to, I don't know, be very, uh, um, have a meltdown or be very, very upset. But we weren't <laughs> because I kind of knew what was coming anyway because of the whole bunch leading, of tests and yeah, it, all yeah. that that led up to it. And it was like, okay, God's got this. We're going to be okay. We walked out of there. We went home, finished cleaning because you know, I don't want to leave my house dirty for somebody to move into literally mopping floors and vacuuming after everything was moved out, got my house all ready. And I went in and moved in with my mother-in-law that night. And I remember she said to me, she said, because uh, I told her that night, we told my mother-in-law and I, and she said, oh, honey, the timing is so bad. You've got so much stress. There's so much going on. Here you are. You just moved out of your house. And anyway, God had a different word to speak to me. And I remember the next morning I got up and I just had quiet time with God. And he said, Cindy, this time is First of all, it wasn't God, but he said, this time is good. You have time. You have time like you've never had before. I'm living with my mother-in-law for eight months and with, with, you know, no home. I was homeless. And he said, you have time now to, to just come to me, soak in me, let me carry you through this. You know, and he said, it's this, what she had said he just negated it all mm -hmm. and said, no, this is, this is all as well. And then God just took it from there. Um, I remember it was September, right after Labor Day. And every year in September, I teach my healing Bible study. I published a Bible study about healing. And I always teach it between Labor Day and Thanksgiving in that 10 weeks. It's a really nice little block. People are going back to school. It's a great time to come and do a Bible study. And we have just... So many people come and bring their friends and their family and lives crazy changed. So I was going to teach my Bible study and God showed me this is more for you than for them because you're, you're deepening your roots. You're enriching your roots. And he, I, the one thing that he's shown me over and over in the last couple of years is the tree of life and Psalm one and, and Jeremiah 17 both talk about the tree of life and that um, as you are deeply planted and rooted, that storms will come and um, you know problems, there may be drought or whatever, but you are gonna thrive and be fruitful in the midst of it. And he showed me that's exactly what was happening during those 10 weeks. As I was teaching the foundational truths of healing, they were growing deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in me. And in my heart. Wow. So how did you deal with the cancer then? Did you get miraculously healed? Did you go through any treatments? Yeah. How did you respond to it in yes. the natural? Because you deepened your roots, which is yep. great and yep. awesome. But then you had to get up and, you know, live life every day. And do something. Living at your yes. Law. So what did you yes. like to do every day? How did this, because you got healed yes. of it. So how? Yes. So it was a completely different journey than my first journey. Um, I remember we had two really good healing centers that we used 20 years ago when I had melanoma. We used U of M and then we decided to use Carmanos. Um, ultimately we went to Carmanos and they were both well-renowned, excellent cancer institutes. But, and, and I, there's nothing wrong with them. But in my heart, for whatever reason, that's not where I felt I wanted to go or needed to go. And um, I had had people that I ministered to that had gone to the cancer uh, CTCA, Cancer Treatment Centers of America. And the closest one is located north of Chicago. 
And I didn't know that's where I wanted to, to, to go, but I thought I'm just going to at least give him a call. So I did, gave him a call. And I've never experienced anything like this in the world of medicine. Um, I went online, got a 1-800 number. I made a call. Within about 15 seconds, I was talking to a compassionate person, not a voicemail, not a trail of people, but a compassionate person. Wow. And and I, I talked with her for, I don't know how long Kent was with me when we had the conversation. And when I got off the phone, it was like, that's where I want to go. And I could, I mean, I don't want to sell a cancer Institute or a doctor, but all I know is that that was where I needed to be. And that's what's important and for you. Needed it was, to be. You needed to be yeah, in the other one. God led before. me there. Yeah. It's like, yes, you need to be where God has us. Had me go. for this season for yeah. such a time as this. And, uh, the, uh it, I, so I made an appointment. I went and um, everything just started happening really, really fast. So the first thing was I went for my first round of tests and I was there scheduled to be there for a whole week. I was there for I went for my first day of visits and they wanted to do neurological surgery on my back in two days, mm. um, which uh, to get a biopsy, first of all, to see what exactly what kind of cancer it was. And also to relieve the compression on my back, relieve it. Because the reason I had all the pain was because I had lots of tumors mm -hmm. in my bones. And the, the biggest area was around my um, lower lumbar vertebrae and pressing on my sacrum and that whole area of my body. So I, I had surgery. So here I am. I go to this cancer institute. They start doing bunches of tests. And I had surgery within two days. Wow. I went back home because I had to wait for the biopsy report to come back. And it came back stage four lymphoma. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about CTCA is that they give you the option of how much or how little information they give you. Wow. They didn't make me hear all of the results. They gave me the option. I guess I had a patient portal. I never went there mm -hmm. until after I was healed. Yes, they, they gave me the option of knowing lots of details. I said, I don't need to know a lot of details. They gave me the option of knowing all of the, all of the protocol and all of the medical stuff and all of the symptoms and side effects. And I said, no, thank you. I just had to sign a little thing that said they, they asked me and I said, no. So when I went back and they gave me the, um, the protocol, they wanted to do treatment, um, chemotherapy and immunotherapy. And they wanted to start the next day because when you're traveling to Chicago, you're there, you just do everything and then you drive home. Yeah, for our and, listeners here, we're in the east side of Michigan and yes. Chicago is about four or five hours away. Yeah, so six hours, right. Six so hours away drive. just to let your listeners know that yes. going to Chicago wasn't like going to the corner store. <laughs> right, exactly. So we were at our second trip to Chicago. And when he gave me that, that protocol, we said we, we wanted time to pray. We wanted time to think about it and pray. And, but we needed to do it. We needed to make a decision, you know, while we were there, yes or no. So he left the room, Kent and I took a very short time to pray, maybe 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we decided to go with it. We decided to say yes. And I remember one of the first things that happened was I, I had condemnation. Mm -hmm. But let me say this very clearly condemnation is not from God. Amen. Romans 8, 1 says, now there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank God I knew that. So yeah. when I was having that guilt, that like, what are you doing? You're a healing teacher. What are you doing taking medicine, Cindy? When I had that, I ran right to God. And I said, God, you tell me, you help me. You help me to know how to, how to um, make sense of this. Because I, I was going to start treatment the next day. And he spoke to me. I've got some notes in front of me because this is so important. He spoke to me a few very important things. One of the things he said was, Cindy, don't be wise in your own eyes. That scripture, you'd be surprised how often that's in the Bible. And I think he showed me every one of them <laughs> without looking. They just, every day, every time I open the Bible, I was saying, Cindy, don't be wise in your own eyes. And he spoke that right to my heart. Yeah. I believe what he was telling me. I was a healing teacher. I know scriptures about healing. I've been teaching healing now for about 16, 17 years. And he said, don't be wise in your eyes. Don't, Cindy, don't think you know, just because you know all the scriptures. Don't think you know everything. 
Yeah. And, and then he said so to me, off track so easily yes. by this line of thinking or that line of thinking and the pressure of, oh, well, you were supernaturally healed the first time. Why aren't you being supernatural? Exactly. You know, on all that pressure and condemnation that maybe yes. people might launch at you or you might exactly. hear from somewhere, the enemy throws yes. it at you and those kind yes. of things. I was just reading um, in my Bible in the footnotes talking about the Tower of Babel because I was researching that I went to a creation museum and they actually, they reworded about when the languages came forth, I'd never heard it this way before, that God created language. I'd never thought of it that way before because it says he confused their language. And I was okay. looking it up and it means kind of like mix, like you mix batter <laughs> kind of thing. Okay. But in the footnotes there, it talked about what I think this it's the root of what you're talking about, this being wise in your own eyes. So I'm bringing this up. And I think it's really the core problem of all humanity. I mean, you can boil yeah. down probably every sin to this, I think. Yeah. And the, it was two words, human arrogance. Because we think we know. And sometimes Boy. we think we know for, you know, yeah. good reasons, because we ought to know. But it's like, we need him to just like, take a minute, like he did with you. Yes. Don't be wise in your yes. own life. And it will take yes. that time to say, God, how do I walk through this? How do yes. I walk through this? That's all we need to do. Yes. That's bowing our knee. And yes, say, no, and I humility. Everything. I'm not going to be arrogant about this. You're smarter than me. You're God. Yes. If I understand it or not, I'm still going to believe you're God and smarter. Than yes, me. yes, yes. What a, what a powerful word, word, human arrogance. Yeah. And that's basically what God was speaking to me. And then he asked me a question. He said, is your faith in your faith or is your faith in your God? Oh, I love that. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Is your faith in your faith or is your faith in your God? That's a big, that's yeah. like a magnetic north and true north. Just yeah. a teeny tiny adjustment. Yeah. But that's why I wanted you to say it again. Yes. Because we can do that and not even know. That's why yes. it's so important for us to take a minute, for us to pause. And yes. just some awareness, mindfulness. What am I thinking? How am I feeling? Where are my priorities? Where is my faith? Maybe I yes. don't know where it is. I think yes. we're here. Maybe I left it in the closet. I don't know, but we need to take yeah. it to what's going on. So yes. listeners, I can just pause whatever yes. you're going through, whatever you're facing, just hit the pause button, hit the pause button and just Reach for help. Like I've said many times before, one of the most powerful prayers, I believe it's so short and so simple. And it's just God help. Mm. It's just God help. And then pause. Yeah. And like Cindy had said earlier, expectation. That's like with your hands out. It's like you can even be like, you call your kid into the room. You want to give them something. Say, close your eyes and hold out your hands. Yeah, yeah. what you're going to give them. But if yeah. we have that same kind of expectation and, and let God give us What's good? Mm -hmm. Because that's that's what he does. He gives good stuff. Yes, he does. So then the third thing that he said to me, well, or that he, he just um, settled in my heart was the whole concept of fear of God. And I had been, I had taught on it recently. And, and that, that scripture had just been searing my heart. There was a scripture in Proverbs chapter three, where it says, it says three, eight, it says, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. Those three things. And when I, I just delved into what does it mean to fear the Lord? And my, my simple Cindy way of sharing what that means is who do you care more about? God or people? Mm -hmm. And God was saying, do you care more about what I think or more about what the people will think? And then the second part of fear of God is, who do you trust? Yeah. Is your trust in me? Or is your trust in man or medicine or whatever? Mm -hmm. And I could with all my heart say, God, my trust is in you. Yes, I was taking the medicine. Mm -hmm. But my trust 100% was in him. Yeah. And when, my sh when I shifted away from that condemnation thing and away from that, what are people going to think? And I'm the healing teacher and I'm taking medicine. And I just put that all aside. I was like, it doesn't matter. God, I trust you. Amen. And I know that you're taking care of me. And from that moment on, I never questioned it again. I just went ahead with the protocol. 
And God took care of everything to the amazing degree. I went through the, the protocol was four rounds. The initial protocol was four rounds of treatment once a month for four months. And each round was two days, two days of chemo, two days of immunotherapy. And then I would rest for a month and then I would go back and have the same thing the next month. Ha after four rounds, they wanted to check and see how I was doing. Mm -hmm. My doctor was amazing. I love this guy. I, I've grown to love him. Like he's just amazing. But he told me at the very beginning, he said, this will be gone in four weeks or four months. This will be gone. Awesome. So here my doctor is speaking in faith, big time, you know, and it's like, yeah, I I'll like that. You. You know? <laughs> I'll agree with you. And so after four months, I went back and had uh, a PET scan as well as a bone marrow biopsy. And it was completely gone, oh, completely God. gone. And I had, I mean, I could, I knew that I was healing. I knew that it was getting better because all the pain was leaving out of my body and I was getting stronger and I could feel my body healing and I could feel myself just feeling so much better. You know, when you get sick over gradually, you don't even really realize it until you're getting better. And then you see all of those things that weren't good that are improving. Yeah. And um, it was just, uh, I mean, I got better very, very quickly. But during that season, this is what I want your, your listeners to hear and to really know. And that is, we were talking about the first time I had cancer, reading those scriptures out loud, because Jenny said, this is your medicine, read these aloud every day. And I did it. Mm -hmm. And I, and I grew in faith. I went from fairy tale to believing those promises, but this time it was so different. Uh, and the word of God was so sweet in my life during this season like you know sometimes the bible calls it honey mm -hmm. it was it was so beautiful i had bunches of of words that he had spoken to me um and they were a, a variety i went back to my charles capps book but i also had lots of scriptures that he had spoken just to me just for me that was Raymond. and i had um a psalm 91 that i just uh uh a paraphrase of Psalm 91 that I just stood on. So I had a lot of different things and I wasn't religious about it. I would just spend time with God and his word and meditate on it. I wasn't just reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just reading a chapter a day. I was meditating on these words that he'd given to me. Mm -hmm. And every day without fail, he would minister to me. He would comfort me. He would build me up. He would, he would um, just, Sometimes it was overwhelming love. Sometimes it was a sense of victory. Sometimes it was a sense of, of strength. It was, it was very different every day. But yeah. what was the common denominator was he was ministering to me through his word. Yeah. And, and I know that that was huge in my journey. Yeah. Well, I asked you before we started... And just to put it in this way for our listeners, because the easy answer is God. <laughs> but I want to yeah. get a little bit more than that. Of you know, cancer two times, a person could feel like a victim. Like, oh my goodness, I already mm -hmm. did this once. How can we mm -hmm. this happen again? Mm -hmm. How did you put off that victim and grab a hold of being a victor instead? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think my walk with God and my, um, you know, my, my new relationship that I live in put me in that place right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't God. I, it, it's, God doesn't give bad things to his kids. He's a good, good father. And I did go to God at the very beginning and the very next day after I was diagnosed and I said, God, why? Mm -hmm. I wanted to know. Yeah. You know, why? What opened the door? What allowed this cancer into my body? Because I knew it wasn't him. Mm -hmm. And what he showed me, um, well, he spoke to me. He said, you allowed your immune system to be broken down. Mm -hmm. But then he showed me so good. He showed me how months earlier he had been uh, uh, helping me not to let my immune system get broken down. And I was, I just didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So about 
oh my, my goodness, probably nine months before I was diagnosed, he called me to come away with him. Mm. And he said, put me on your calendar. Mm. Said, it really kind of took me off guard because I have got on my calendar every day. I have, I have quiet time with him every day. Mm -hmm. And he said, put me on your calendar, come away with me. And so I did. I looked at my calendar and I put one day a week as a retreat day. Mm -hmm. And I just set the whole day aside to be, to come away with him. He was showing me, you know, mm -hmm. that there was something that important. And then about a month before I was diagnosed, I had a prophetic word spoken over me. I was in church and somebody came up to me out of the blue and they spoke over me and they said um, something to the effect, um, you need to fill your own tank. God was speaking to me. You need to rest. You need to fill your own tank. Mm -hmm. And then there was also a, a encouragement in there somewhere about he was, he was going to be there with me or something. I don't remember that part, but that looking in hindsight, I think God had been putting things in motion for me to avoid the cancer. And yet I was pushing, 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 mm. you know, we were building, we were packing, we were, I was getting back into that type a personality, go, 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 do, do, do mm. not resting, not taking good care of myself. And, but the thing is, God is so good. He immediately put me in that place of rest eight months. <laughs> wow. I had eight months of rest and rest in him. Wow. And built That's my immune awesome. system back up. <laughs> wow. So what are you doing now? What's going on in your life now? Well, I finished my uh, my book about this journey. It's called Journeying Well, Step-by-Step Step with Jesus. And he called me to write this in the middle of my journey, in the middle of cancer. I didn't write it after I was healed. I wrote it in the midst. And this is what he spoke to me. He said, Cindy, your story is not in your healing. That part is already finished. That part is already written. It is finished. Your story is in your journey, step by step with Jesus. And what he showed me and what was spoken to me by three people that I highly, highly esteem is that this time through cancer, I did do, I did the medicine and, and it has made me to be very relatable. Mm -hmm. when I teach healing, probably nine out of 10 are taking some sort of medicine. Mm -hmm. And at the, at, at before I hadn't, I was, you know, supernaturally healed. Now I've been through what they've been through wow. and it has made me so relatable. And I was teaching, I was writing in the midst of the journey. So starting in January, I had, I had treatment from November through March, I think starting in January, I started sharing, I was transparent. And every week that I taught, I shared what was going on spiritually, not so much with the cancer, although I did give them little nuggets. They knew that I was in the middle of cancer treatment. I gave them little bits of that, but the most of it was what I was doing with God wow. and what he was showing me and, and, and revelation that he was given to me. So that's what's in this book. And that's also what is in my um, teaching podcast from January through July of that year. Oh, wow. You have a podcast too. Well, our podcast is basically our teachings that are put on iTunes on in podcasts. Okay. So Kent records the audio of all of our teachings and that's what goes into the podcast. And what's the name of this podcast? Um, Jesus Christ heals today. I believe <laughs> <laughs> Kent can tell you um, Jesus well, Christ heals today. I know that's the name of our ministry, so I'm sure that's the name of the podcast. <laughs> Well, I should get the link for it for the show notes. <laughs> People can go and listen to that if they're like, okay, I'll find I want to know what this lady knows, you know, because yes. maybe if they're local, then they can come where you teach. But maybe yes. you know, they're over in South Africa where you were just back, yes. where your daughter got married. Yes. yes, she was in South yes. Africa. If you're listening from South Africa, she's been there. Yes. She's yes. been lots of places. So yes. is, this something, is there anything you want to make sure that you leave the people with or something you... Holy Spirit, just bring into your heart. Do you want to make sure that they know before we sign off with our, our friends here? Oh, my goodness. I think the biggest thing, and this may sound strange from somebody who's a healing pastor, is that healing is wonderful. I will attest to that. But Jesus is what's wonderful. Mm 
Mm. And when you let Jesus in to be the Lord over whatever it is, everything changes. Mm. And I have seen so many lives radically changed. I can't even tell you. I had, I, I'll share one, one my tiny story. Um, last night, um, we were at a healing meeting and there's a man and woman who came. They've been coming for about six months. And she said, Cindy, everything has changed since we started coming. And it's not me. It's the truth mm-hmm. that she's hearing. It's Jesus mm-hmm. that she has come to know personally. Amen. And that's what happened in my life. And that's what I've seen happen over and over and over. That relationship with God and knowing Jesus personally changes everything, no matter what storm of life you're in. Amen. Amen. He's in the boat with you if you invite him in the boat, right? Amen. Amen. (laughs) So how can people connect with you and where do you teach at for any people who are in Michigan for them to? Okay. Wonderful. I love to share. They want to hear you. Okay. Our website is jesuschristhealstoday.com and on our website all of our media is free so we have all of our video and audio teachings available um there's all kinds of testimonies on there so you can read about all sorts of healing testimonies that have occurred all of our books are available to purchase on our website um and then we have two healing meetings a week we have one on monday evenings at living grace church in shelby township at seven o'clock PM. And then we have a healing meeting on Tuesday evenings at Rochester Christian Church in Rochester, which is on the corners of Snell and Rochester Road. And that's also at seven o'clock. Um, I also um, do um, individual um, healing one-on-one ministry as needed, um, but that all of that information is available on our website. Awesome. This has just been wonderful. Cindy, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Mm -hmm. Just the passion of Jesus and focusing on him that he he's the answer to everything. It does sound trite sometimes when you just rattle it off and someone doesn't understand. But when you agree, you take the time again to pause. It's like we're talking about a person here. We're talking about a person who is God, a person who became a man. This is a person. It's not an idea. It's not a thought. It's not a religion. It's a person. So thank you for just magnifying him and for being with me today. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you listeners for being with us today. I know this blessed you. Reach out for help from Cindy. If that serves you, share it with your friends. You have a family member, a friend who is in need of healing, or they need to know Jesus better. Lord, he is so good and he loves you. And I love you. I'm that lady on the internet who loves you. And I tell you that because it took me a long time to know that God loves me and love is a need and love heals and God is love. And so I'm here to say, I love you, but Jesus loves you even more than I love you. So until next time, 